My friend Terrence, after the Rodney King verdict, we had all these conversations because he's got a poster, or had a poster, in his room of all these black leaders. I was 18. I'd already been a social justice activist for a few years. You know, I was down for the revolution. I didn't know who any of these black leaders were except Dr. King, and I had the most narrow, whitewashed, Reagan era, era, era right wing version of Dr. King. Basically, a Dr. King that supports a colorblind worldview. And I was like, oh, there's Malcolm X. I've never seen a picture of him, but I think he hates white people. <laughs> and I'd ask Terrence, I was like, who are these people? And he'd say, well, this is Ida B. Wells, who led the anti lynching campaign and infused a feminist and black radical tradition to create the anti lynching campaign. This is Ella Baker, who is really the, 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 the midwife of the civil rights movement with uh, helping to support Dr. King, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. She revolutionized uh, community organizing. Here's uh, Septima Clark, who was the architect of the citizenship schools that brought together basic democratic voting registration with a profound black freedom vision of transforming power in the society through an empowered electorate that would transform governance. Next week, I'd come back and be like, so who are these people again? And eventually, Terrence, very gracious, he said, look, I'm not going to keep telling you about who these black leaders are because you feel really guilty about the Rodney King verdict and about our friendship, and you're trying to show me that you care about black people. I'm not telling you about W.E.B. Du Bois and Langston Hughes because I want you to know something about black people so that when Black History Month comes around, you've got something to contribute. I'm not telling you who these people are because I want you to know about my leaders. I am telling you about who these people are because they are your leaders. And then he said something that transformed my life. He said, this is one of the ways that white supremacy hurts white people. And I was like, wait, what? And I didn't say it, I didn't say it, but in my head I was like, but racism is a black problem. He said, one of the ways that white supremacy hurts you as a white person is it raises you to both embrace unconsciously a white privileged superiority of thinking of yourself as knowing everything better than everyone else, and so therefore you are forever the one to tell everyone else what's going on, and you have nothing to learn, while simultaneously white supremacy on the daily raises you to be malnourished of the most important democratic movements, democratic values, liberatory visions and possibilities spoken through poetry, literature, social justice movements of people of color. White supremacy raises white people to be structurally stupid about liberation while superior and feeling forever dominant within this hierarchy that is also killing you too. <laughs>